The Brewers make a couple of signings, and Mark Antanasio says a few things. We'll get to all that coming up next here on this edition of Locked On Brewers. You are Locked On Brewers, your daily Milwaukee Brewers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, the Brewers made it official today. Brandon Woodruff has been rumored for the last couple of days of uh, signing a two-year deal. We'll tell you about that coming up here in a little bit. Gary Sanchez finally inks his deal after a couple of hurdles there. And uh, we'll get to that as well. Mark Antanasio talked to the team, talked to the media, and uh, some interesting things he had to say. Chuck Freeman, Locked On Brewers, part of Locked On Podcast Network. We are your team every day. Good to have you along. Longtime sportscaster here in the state of Wisconsin and uh, second-year host of Locked On Brewers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. And this show is brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel, make every moment more with new customers. Join today. You get 150 bucks in bonus bets. Your first bet, 5 bucks or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com backslash Locked On to get started today. All right. Well, the Brewers hopefully will get started on winning this season. I like what they did today. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, first of all, our, our podcast, you get it on Google, Spotify, uh, Apple, all the major downloads, all the platforms out there. And there might be some obscure ones as well that you go to. We're going to be on there as well because we're the number one Brewers podcast on the internet because of you great Brewer fans out there downloading us and watching us every day like you do. Go to our YouTube page, Search Locked On Brewers on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell. Our growing YouTube audience. We will be there. Breaking news, talking news with you guys. Commentary, slants on things, whatever. We will be here uh, talking Brewers baseball with you all the way now uh, through the postseason. Hopefully postseason. Will it be postseason? We'll get to that coming up here in a little bit. Uh, first of all, the two signings. Gary Sanchez, word just came down. The Brewers have signed him. Now, it's uh, reported that it's around $7 million, but because of a wrist, because of something they found in his wrist, uh, allegedly, that um, he agreed to take a lower base salary. Now, with incentives, he could still make, what, $7 million a year, but the base had to be lowered a little bit. And Gary Sanchez, so... Uh, you know, the Brewers obviously felt, you know, again, they did their due diligence here. They got to, they, they do it on all these players. They put them through physicals and all that just so they detect something. They saw something with the wrist there that they didn't like that sent up some red flags, but they feel comfortable enough to give him an incentive based deal. And they lowered the base with Gary Sanchez, and Sanchez felt comfortable with that as well. Again, with some of these free agents, we are getting late in the game for some of these guys. Man, I don't remember a baseball season where we went this far into the offseason with several of these guys unsigned so far, several of them, several of them. Um, but Gary Sanchez uh, is uh, now in the fold. Uh, the press release came out just a couple of minutes ago. And Brandon Woodruff, about 10 minutes before that, it was officially learned that Brandon Woodruff is indeed in the fold. What we learned here, a two-year deal with a club mutual, with a mutual option for 2026. So, but let's face it, if Woodruff in 2025 has a breakout season, well, the option for 2026 would probably not be agreed to on his part because he'd want a long-term contract extension. Um, so likely that 2026 will never be an option for either team, um, either side. But, you know, let's hope, let's just get to that point. Let's get him through rehab. Uh, I also saw in the Journal Sentinel, they kind of reiter reiterated, I think it was Todd Rosiak who said, yeah, 2024, Woodruff would not play. The doctors out there say, well, when he first had the surgery, there was a chance he'd come back at 2024. Uh, there's no, uh, uh, they're not going to risk it. He's not going to risk it. Brewers don't want to risk it. So he is going to be rehabbing the entire 2024, which is okay with me. Got him in the fold. Let's uh, get him healthy and, and see what he could do in 2025. Gary Sanchez, interesting with Gary uh, Sanchez. Uh, he'll catch. And when he's not catching, he'll DH. Uh, obviously, Contreras is the number one catcher, but you have another good catcher here. You know, you have two good, two real good catchers. I thought last year, too. 
two solid catchers, but get, with the Sanchez, yep, the power number is a little bit with Gary. You know, 19, 20, 21 home runs last year, I think it was. Uh, average wasn't great, but still, Gary Sanchez going to add some much needed punch. Uh, you know, you think of Gary Sanchez, you think he's been traveled a little bit, but. Uh, you think of him with the Yankees. You think of him with the New York Yankees. But uh, bounce back year this past year with San Diego, and uh, we'll see. Uh, but I another bat to this lineup. Another bat to this lineup. Uh, can mix and match things around a little bit. Uh, you know, you can never use enough bats, right? Uh, but, again, I, I believe on the days that he's not catching, well, Contreras, the days that Contreras isn't catching, he'll be playing, he'll be DHing. Assuming he's going to have the season he did last year, uh, you know he's hitting well, and you got you can't take him out of the lineup because he's hitting so well. And the Sanchez will catch, and the Sanchez will probably DH sometimes too when he's not catching. You know, there's a lot of different ways, a lot of different things ways you can go there. Chuck Freeman here on Lockdown Brewers, part of Lockdown Podcast Network. We are your team every day. Mark Antanasio talked to the team. So did Pat Murphy. Uh, his first day was Tuesday. Uh, you know the uh, Everybody reported, and they had their first workout Tuesday. So we'll get to all that coming up here next. Chuck Freeman, Lockdown Brewers, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. We are your team every day. FanDuel is America's number one sports book for a reason. FanDuel, because all the great offers uh, and all the great things you could do on there. Again, 150 bucks in bonus bets when you um, win your $5 bet. And you get $150 in bonus bets for the new customers. That is the new customers. That's 150 bucks. If your bet wins that $5 bet. Now they have quick bets. They have uh, same game parlays over and others props, obviously all sorts of sports and NBA is going in full throttle. That'll be starting up uh, again. This uh, in, the, in the coming days here, Thursday, I believe. And um, you know, baseball will be starting up Yeah, college Basketball all days on Saturdays and Sundays as well. So great time to get in. FanDuel.com slash lockdown. Shoot your shot today. $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. FanDuel, the official sports book of the NBA. And I'm Chuck Freeman, Lockdown Brewers, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. We'll take our first break and come right back after this timeout. Welcome back to Lockdown Brewers. Chuck Freeman, your host here on Lockdown Brewers, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. We are your team every day. I don't care. I, I and I'm tired of hearing. Well, since 2005, the Brewers have done this, and in 2017 they had this. But we'll throw this out anyway. Mark Antanasio, six division titles in 20 years. Um, since 2017, they have the third best record in the National League. Okay, and. You can go on and on with all sorts of data that and stats that tell how good the Brewers have been, okay? But the bottom line is, you know, no one talks about, well, I do at least, uh, how about how about NLCS appearances? How about championships, okay? Yeah, you're great. You win in division titles. Well, how are we not taking this thing to the next level? And, you know, I hear on Mark Antanasio's watch, or was Bud Sealy just that bad of an owner? Just that bad of an owner that – dreaded stretch that they went through from 82 to 2007. Well, 07 would have been Antanasio. But, you know, I feel like the, like the last, what, 20-some-odd years of Sealy ownership, no postseason experience uh, experiences for any of these guys. So, uh, and then they had the first winning record in a long time under Antanasio when he first took over there, uh, in, I believe it was 2004, and then, you know, 2008, they finally went to the postseason and all that. But, I, you know, you know I, they, they throw all these numbers and all this what people want to throw at me and all that. But I look at it this as uh, championships, okay? We're taking the old bite of the apples, like we, we like to say with the Packers, but we're not winning championships as of late for the Milwaukee Brewers. As of the last 42 years, at least, I checked. Um, but, see, that's what I matter. Yeah, competitive, you know, staying afloat and, you know, competing for a, a division title. That's great. I'm not going to take any away with them that, but my issue is things aren't going advancing at all, advancing to that next level. And I, I'm giving, I know some of you are really down on Mark Adonacio as an owner. I think he's been a pretty good owner uh, as far. Well, Sealing had a deal with other issues back in the nineties. Uh, there was, an ascending payroll, and he had nobody coming into County Stadium to uh, pay 
for that payroll. I mean, they're drawing five, 6,000 fans for a game. There'd be times they'd have a twilight doubleheader starting at four o'clock, and there'd be a couple hundred people in the ballpark. It was just bad. And this is like 1995, 96. They built a new ballpark. They started to turn things around on Athanasio, and people started to come. And um, back then, in the 90s, spending $5 million on Hideo Nomo was a big deal. Okay? Brewers couldn't spend. Brewers couldn't spend. And now they can spend a little more. And Mark Athanasio says that there's money to spend um, should they have to down the road here. We'll get to that. But, yeah, all these numbers that people want to throw at me, about winning his team, third winning his team. Only the Dodgers and the Braves have better records in the National League since 2017. I'm tired of hearing about it. I want to hear, I want to see championships. Good at the winning, okay. It's not the other way around, the third worst team in the National League, but still, time to take this to a, a new level. That's what we want. And that's what the Brewer fans, you guys who are packing the stands and buying your 20 packs and your 10 packs and going out there on a Sunday for, hey, it's great to get a bobblehead and they've decreased bobblehead days this year. It's great to get a bobblehead or, an uh, uh, I don't know, uh, an apron, but give me victories. I'll trade those. Give me division titles leading into NLCS appearances. That's what I'll take. And Antanasio said, the expectation is to win. He told the media, expectation is to win. He said, we could be good. We could be really good. Now, I know that's what he's going to say. Because if he comes out here and says, well, I don't know how we're good we're going to be this year. Man, we might not be very good. Then the alarms will sell off. And guys who are on the fence, maybe, for still buying those season tickets or opening day tickets or single game tickets aren't hurrying down to uh, American Family Field here in the winter to buy themselves some tickets. If uh, my, the boss of the team says, oh, we're not going to be very good, of course he's going to say, well, we got a chance to be real good, really good, he says. Of course. That's what he's going to say. Again, spring training, you're going to be filled with optimism, but he's the owner of the team. But, you know, some people say, well, it's not his fault that the Brewers have not won championships. He's the owner of the team. It starts at the top, right? It, it eventually starts at the top of uh, of the whole thing. He does say uh, there is room in the budget. He said there's always room in the budget for if the team gets into a pennant race, and hopefully they will, that there's room to go out and buy some players. I didn't see that last year, though. But he said there's always room in the budget for that. Apparently not room in the budget for off-season moves. Well, Reese Hoskins, but nothing spectacular. But there's room in the budget, apparently, in mid-season if they need to do make such a move. But, you know, 2018 was the last time they really went out and, you know, that quote-unquote went for it sort of thing. But money in the budget. Uh, room in the budget, he said, for additional players uh, near the deadline. Uh, Corbin Burns, he was asked about Burns said he fully expected Burns to be on this roster come spring training. And uh, the Orioles made him an offer they couldn't refuse. Really? You couldn't get anything better? That was that great of a deal that you got for Corbett Burns? Okay. Again, it might turn out to be the deal of the century, but the early returns on it, I'm not very, I don't think that was an offer you couldn't refuse. Let's just put it that way. Uh, you know, they owe it to the fans. They really do. The Brewer, Atanasio, the Brewers owe it to the fans. Now, Atanasio wanted to talk about to talk to the team and all that and felt that they have the bunch to win it. The division was better, obviously, and he made reference to the St. Louis Cardinals, who were the overwhelming pick to win the division last year, and they finished 21 games behind the Brewers. He did men make mention of that uh, when he talked to the media as well. So interesting. Antanasio always talks to the media opening day of spring training and uh, he'll be around obviously, but um, yeah, championships is what I'm thinking. Uh, Pat Murphy. We're getting to learn a little bit more about Pat Murphy every day. We are in the early part. He's old school. First of all, <laughs> he drove around spring training around the facility on Tuesday and uh, Tuesday night in a, uh, in a cart, you know, one of those carts that you'll see at a grocery store 
where, you know, if you're disabled or you're elderly, you drive those carts, you know, up and down the aisles. And you, uh, I don't, there's not a fee for them. You just check them out and you, you're able to ride them. Well, he was riding one of those around uh, Phoenix at the, at the fields on, on Tuesday trying to convey, Hey, you know, that he's <laughs> kind of making a joke about him being 65 and being one of the oldest managers in baseball and all that. And he made reference to that too. When he talked to the guys, uh, you know, after, uh, after that and all that, and he got gathered them in a clubhouse and all that, but you know, he's old school. Definitely. He's nickname guy. That's for sure. You know, these old school guys in the seventies and eighties, and he didn't manage back then in the major leagues, but the seventies and eighties managers, those guys were all nickname guys, uh, old school baseball guys. And you know, the Billy Martins and Earl Weavers, and you would go right down these old school baseball guys, seventies and eighties, all nickname guys and Murphy throw it out the nicknames for guys already. Um, but you know, I just think that if you go to Twitter or you go to YouTube, maybe on YouTube it is too. He, a part of his speech is on there uh, that he addressed the team fiery speech. And I don't care how old he is. That, that doesn't matter to me. I mean, he was making a play on that while he was driving around uh, the practice facilities but I don't care how old he is. I think that's so overrated. Uh, and people will say, well, geez, how's an older guy going to relate to the younger guys and all that? No, that doesn't matter. You know, um, look at the coach at Miami in college basketball, Aranaga. He seems to be relating to his guys. He's, he always has his program winning every year. So, uh, it, you know, it doesn't. It, 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 the age does not matter to me. Uh, how old he is, I could care less. That, that, that's the furthest. When I saw him driving around in the cart, I was like, oh, is he hurt or something like that? Is something wrong with it? Oh, and I see, oh, yeah, he's making a play. I mean, and, and on top of it, 65 is not old. Today's world, 65 is not old, not old at all. Murphy looks great, and I'm perfectly fine with him leading the team. The only thing I don't want, as I mentioned months ago, is I do not want him to be keeping the seat warm for Ricky Weeks. I haven't heard any mention of Ricky Weeks so far. So far, and we're almost a week into guys reporting. All right. Haven't heard any mention of Ricky, Ricky Weeks. I don't want this to be a co manager job uh, or that Ricky Weeks is, you know, the so called manager and waiting as soon as, you know, things go a little sideways for the Brewers. Murph is the manager. He's the voice in that locker room. Let's get behind this guy and, and win some games. But uh, yeah, I, I do not want Weeks, you know, to be the, Associate manager there and waiting just in case the shoe drops on Pat Murphy. No, he's not there to coach anybody to take his job. Murphy is there to win games. They talk about winning games, winning games. They told him, as he said today, winning games until they tell him he can't play any more games this year. I'm good with that. Now, you know, again, what's he going to say? But he gave a pretty fiery speech to the locker room. Okay, when we come back. Uh, we'll talk about. Talk about a couple of other things with the Milwaukee Brewers going down the as we get into spring training, what to look for here in the coming days. And that first game is coming up as well. We'll get to all that coming up here. Chuck Freeman, Lockdown Brewers, coming up uh, um, on our second break here on Lockdown Brewers, part of Lockdown Bo- Podcast Network. Excuse me. Uh, we are your team every day, game time. Also, a great sponsor of Lockdown Brewers, game time. I've told you I bought brewer tickets behind the dugout. I bought Bucks tickets, uh, concert tickets. You haven't. Game time. What I really like about game time, what I really like about game time is you can browse through the game time app. First of all, download the game time app. And you can view from all the seats at the venue. You click it on. You, you want to see it sit 220, section 220. Click it on. Oh, there's my, there, there's where I'll be sitting. Okay. I love that. All uh, You can find all your totals up front. So as you click through, you're not adding totals and totals and totals before your price for your ticket is way more than you thought it was going to be. No, all your prices are up right up front. You'll get a great deal before you check out. Buy the tickets in a matter of seconds with just two taps, two taps, and you are good to go. Game time is fast and easy to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, theater events, killer last minute deals, all the prices, views from your seat, um, best price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. It's so easy to use. Again, you can buy tickets right after the event as well. Some of these online places, you can't do that. You can do that with game time. You just, hey, game, Brewer game starts. 
you can still go online and get yourself a ticket. I've done that as well in the second inning. So again, first things first, download the Game Time app, create an account, use the promo code LOCKDOWN, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, 20 bucks off your first purchase. You buy $70 worth of tickets your first time, you get 20 bucks off, you pay 50 bucks. That's a great deal as well. Plus, you're already getting a good price on the tickets. Terms apply again. Create an account. Redeem the code locked on for 20 bucks off. Download the game time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. We are coming right back here on Lockdown Brewers. Chuck Freeman here on Lockdown Brewers, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. We are your team every day. I still feel there is going to be another move to be made with the Milwaukee Brewers. Now, the Sanchez deal. That had been pending for two weeks now, and we now we know why, because of the wrist, and they did get him in. Still feel like there's a need for a third baseman. I still am not going to count on them trading an outfielder, okay? And it sounds more and more like Sal Freelich is going to play some third base, all right? I talked about this on the episode yesterday. It sounds more and more like he is going to play some third base. Jackson Churio is going to get a lot of playing time, according to Murphy. A lot of playing time. Murphy said this. One thing about Murphy, I got to throw out there. Um, on MLB Network, he was interviewed. And, and he was asked about the pitching. And he says, well, the pitching is dicey. He's being honest there. Being kind, actually. The pitching is dicey. He said, we have basically one stalwart, the one guy we can count on, Freddie Peralta. Top of the hopefully we count on Freddie Peralta at the top of the rotation. But he said the pitching is dicing. The starting rotation, the pitching is dicey. Absolutely. Not the bullpen. Starting rotation. Very, very dicey. Dicey and icy in any other way you want to describe it. But do I think the Brewers are still going to make another move? Yes. I still think maybe an outfielder gets moved here. Okay. Not one of the not Sal Freelick. Maybe Garrett Mitchell. I don't know. Now Freelick's going to play some infield. And I have a feeling he'll be getting a lot of infield time in spring training. You get him up to speed because there's such a gaping hole at third base. They have to fill it. And Freelix is a logical choice. Credit Murphy for coming up with that idea of putting him over at third base because he probably looked at it and said, God, who am I going to play at third base? Oh, I can't go with Andrew Monasterio. God bless the kid. But, you know, he was just, um, you know, he, he did the nice job last year. But, I, you know, we're trying to win a division here. I'm trying to keep my job. And I need a better third baseman. My my owner uh, hasn't spent any money on a third baseman or made any trades. Uh, so I'm gonna tease. I'm gonna propose to him. What else do we got here? Well, we got this Ortiz kid that just came in, but I don't know. I'm not so sure about second base right now with Terang. So I'm gonna let him compete for that spot. Uh, but third base, he said, I'm gonna go tell. I'm gonna go tell my boss. Hey, let's uh, let's think of switching him to third base. What do you think of that? Switching Freelick over to third base. Everybody was all in on it, and I'm good with that as well. So, But I still think, even though Freelick is going to be playing some third base, I am not going to discount them still getting themselves another third baseman, possibly trading an outfielder. Who knows? And maybe a pitcher. I mean, are they going to go into camp with that rotation that I talked about? My goodness. Wade Miley, your number two guy who's a four guy probably on a, on a team that's trying to win a pennant. A lot of guys are going to have to overperform. A lot of players are going to have to overperform in that starting rotation. Okay. To, to save the offense. If the offense is going to be like it was last year, that rotation, some of those guys like Joe Ross, you know, he's talking about bouncing back. If he's in the rotation, he's going to, he's going to have to be really good. Okay. Freddie is going to have to, Top of the rotation, he's going to have to pitch like a side young candidate up there, isn't he? Your number one guy? I mean, you can't have a 12 and 10 pitcher pitching at the top of the rotation. He's going to have to be very, very good. A lot of that remains to be seen. Chuck Freeman here on Locked On Brewers. Hey, thank you, everybody, for joining us. You get us on Google, Spotify, Apple. We're on all the major downloads on Locked On Brewers. We're the number one Brewers podcast on the internet because you great Brewer fans out there making us. And yeah, Looking forward to seeing you at opening day. And if you see me at the ballpark, obviously during the spring or whenever, I'm out there all the time, like you did last year. Stop and say hello. I've seen many of you guys from my years of doing sports talk in Milwaukee and always, always love, um, you know, 
whatever, taking a selfie or whatever. Love talking to the great Brewer fans because we're all in this together. Also, you, if you download us on the platforms, the audio platforms, try YouTube as well. Search Lockdown Brewers. Please hit the subscribe button, and that'll alert you every time. And the bell there, that'll alert you every time we drop an episode here on Lockdown Brewers. Chuck Freeman, Lockdown Brewers, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. We are your team every day. So long, everybody.